stage one fuel loads complete. In a few minutes, Falcon 9 will lift off, carrying our Starlink satellites to low Earth orbit. Now, in order to get these satellites into space, the rocket has to do more than just go up. It also has to go sideways really, really fast. So at liftoff, gravity is pulling straight down on the rocket. And as we ascend, we tilt the engines, technically called gimbling, and that turns the rocket horizontally. We're still going up, but now we're also headed horizontally away from the launch pad. This is what we call a gravity turn. The rocket typically needs to go 17,500 miles per hour horizontally in order to avoid being pulled back down to Earth and actually get into orbit. To help demonstrate this concept, imagine firing a cannon from a really high mountain. The cannonball will arc, and then gravity will pull it down to Earth. As you increase the power, the cannonball will arc and land further and further away. Eventually, if you could continue to increase the power enough, the cannonball will be going so fast that it ends up in freefall around the Earth. Gravity is still pulling down on the cannonball, but it's going so fast that it never actually hits the ground. This arc, which constantly misses the Earth, is called Falcon an orbit. Thanks for pressurizing for Strovac retract. So when we get to liftoff today, keep an eye on the orientation of Falcon 9. You'll see that we'll go straight up until about T plus 10 seconds, at which point we begin that shift in orientation so Falcon 9 can go sideways really fast. But before we get into that, let's check in on the status of the vehicle for today's launch. We are currently just under T minus four and a half minutes from liftoff. Strong back retract has started. Of our 36th launch of Starlink. And you just heard the call out that that truss structure or the TE has begun retraction. In preparation for that retraction, that those TE clamps you see right below the fairing there will begin to uh, open up to allow the transporter erector to retract. You can see those clamps opening now. transporter erector will begin to pull away from the rocket slightly before at T0 the hydraulics will pull the transporter erector even further, further away from the Falcon 9 as it lifts off. Now again the TE is the structure that provides liquids, gases, electrical connections to the second stage as well as air conditioning to the payload fairing and the Starlink satellites. You can see that slow retraction of the transporter erector in progress. this point in the countdown, both the first and second stages are nearly loaded with nearly fully loaded with 1 million pounds of kerosene fuel and liquid oxygen. And those white clouds that you see around Falcon 9 are created when that super chilled liquid oxygen Stage comes in complete. contact with the air in Florida. We just had that call out that first stage. LOX loading has completed here at T minus a little under three minutes, and the second stage locks loading will complete at T minus two minutes in just about 40 seconds here. At T minus 60 seconds, Falcon 9 will be in startup, so this means that the rocket's autonomous internal flight computers will have taken over the launch countdown. And just stage two locks throttle back. And just inside of T minus two seconds, we will light the Merlin 1D engines and we're set for liftoff. Starlink payload continues to be healthy, and Falcon 19 is not tracking any issues at this time. Here at just a little over T minus two minutes, uh, we are moving into the terminal countdown. Stage two locks loads complete. We've finished the second stage liquid oxygen loading. We are now fully loaded with over a million pounds of kerosene fuel and liquid oxygen. We are waiting for T minus one minute when the Falcon's internal flight computers will take over the yeah, countdown. Well and stage one and stage two will begin pressurizing for launch.
Falcon 9's in startup. Falcon 9 is in startup. We're waiting for that final launch director go for launch in just a few seconds. Launch director, go for launch. We have that final go from the launch director. All systems are go. Let's listen in to the terminal count and watch as Falcon 9 takes our 49 Starlink satellites to orbit. T minus 30 seconds. Minus 15 seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition and lift off. Vehicle is pitching down range. Stage one chamber pressure is normal. Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Launch Complex 39A at Kennedy Space Center, carrying our stack of 49 Starlink satellites to orbit. Moments ago, we throttled the engines Power down in preparation for max Q or maximum aerodynamic pressure, which will happen here in just a few seconds at T plus one minute and 12 seconds. Falcon is supersonic. Max Q. We have just passed through Max Q, and this is the maximum aerodynamic pressure that the stage sees. Next, we'll have three events happening in quick succession. First, we'll have main engine cutoff, followed by stage separation, and then second engine startup one. Now, first main engine cutoff is where all nine of those M1D engines on that first stage will shut off to slow the vehicle down in preparation for stage separation. This is where the first and engine show has begun. This is where the first and second stages will separate with the first stage starting to make its way back to Earth for landing while the second stage continues on its journey to the third event of second engine startup one. And this is where that single MVAC engine on the second stage will light up and propel the second stage along with the Starlink satellites to orbit. We're a little under 30 seconds away from these three events. You'll want to watch out for fairing deploy, which is going to happen shortly after that. Hopefully, we get cool live views from the second stage camera of those fairing halves popping off. Nico. Stage separation confirmed. Wow, beautiful views from the first stage and second stage Both tracker stages there. Are on nominal trajectories. We did have successful Miko fairing stage separation. separation. <laughs> There's fairing deployment there. Again, this what a cool view from the second stage. Again, we did just have confirmation of successful fairing deployment. Again, SpaceX has reflown the Falcon fairing halves since November of 2019. Again, this was our second flight for both of those, and we will be attempting to recover them on our recovery vessel, Doug. It looks like you can just maybe make out those fairing halves in that live view from the ground as they are flying away from the second stage there. It looks like that's the first stage maybe also floating off to the left. Now, as stage two heads towards its targeted drop-off orbit there, stage one will execute two burns in order to make its way back home to Earth. Now, the first is an entry burn. Now, this is where three of the M1D engines will reignite. 
and this helps to slow the stage down as it re-enters the upper parts of the Earth's atmosphere. Now the second burn, of course, is the landing burn, and this is a single engine burn that brings the vehicle speed down rapidly in order to land on the drone. Acquisition signal. If you're just catching up with us, we had a successful launch of Falcon 9 from Launch Complex 39A at Kennedy Space Center, and you're looking at a live view from Falcon 9's second stage as it is delivering the, our Starlink payloads to orbit. Stage 1 is currently making its way back to our drone ship, a shortfall of gravitas in the Atlantic Ocean. We had beautiful views from the ground of the first and second stage plumes there just a little while ago. Now the Merlins on the first stage are optimized for sea level, so these achieve 190,000 pounds of thrust during ascent and descent. And in contrast, the MVAC engine, which you see on your screen right now, is optimized for 220,500 pounds of thrust in vacuum. Now the primary difference between these two engines is just the size of the nozzle. The MVAC nozzle is a lot larger than the M1D nozzles on first stage. Now the Falcon 9 is equipped with four hypersonic titanium grid fins positioned near the top of the first stage. And the first stage is using these grid fins to help navigate and reorient itself as it heads back home to Earth. First stage also has an attitude control system, which you can sometimes see puffs of nitrogen gas coming from. And this attitude control system also helps that first stage uh, orient itself as it returns home. just about 20 seconds from the start of our stage one entry burn. And this is a 20 second burn and it'll help slow the vehicle down as it enters the thicker parts of the Earth's atmosphere. And this is a three engine burn and it is three engines in a row on stage the first one, stage. FTSC. Stage one entry burn startup. There's the start of the entry burn on the first stage. You can see those grid fins as the first stage is flying through its own plume there. Stage two FTSC. Stage one entry burn shut down. We did just have a successful stage one entry burn there. And for those who follow along, you'll know that the soot the on the rocket second stage trajectory is still nominal. Um, as I was saying, the soot on the rocket indicates that it's been flown before. So the fuel that we use on Falcon 9 is rocket grade kerosene or RP-1, which is carbon based. So when it burns, it generates soot. Now, as the booster approaches the landing site and does that long re-entry burn that we just saw, we saw it fly through its own plume, which deposits that soot back onto the first stage. Now you can see that sometimes on the pad, the soot is still stuck onto the first stage from its previous flights. And if you watch closely to your onboard camera during landing, you might be able to see soot sticking on the lens of those cameras as well. Now coming up in just a few seconds, we will have the start of our stage one landing burn. This will be another about 20 second burn. Hopefully it will land us on our drone ship a shortfall of gravitas. Stage two, terminal guidance. In the Atlantic Ocean. Stage one, start up. Here's the start of our stage one landing burn. Cool views of the drone ship approaching. Stage one, landing leg deploy. We 
he did just have the 103rd overall successful recovery of our first stage overall class orbit rocket. insertion. And we just missed it there, but we did have a successful second engine cutoff, and we just got that confirmation of a good orbit from stage two. Now, next up, we'll have one more burn on the second stage that will position the vehicle for payload deployment. Expected loss of signal, cable. But we are awaiting the deployment of our 49th Starlink Expected satellite. Expected loss of signal, Bermuda. Which is scheduled to occur about six minutes from now at T plus 15 minutes. However, you may have just heard the call out for expected loss of signal. Um, again, this uh, means we won't have live audio or visual confirmation of payload deployment due to lack of ground station coverage, but we will acquire signal with our ground station in Kodiak, Alaska at T plus one hour and 20 minutes. So for, for those of you who are interested, we will keep the audio only countdown nets up on our YouTube channel and we'll confirm successful payload deployment on our social media channels.